A good Sunday morning to all you family and Facebook friends. I am Jaden. I am so honored to welcome you to our service today. It is not by accident that you have tuned in to our service. We believe that we that there is a word and worship experience for you. We believe that God is doing something, um, some amazing things here at True Vine Church, where our motto is, we are a church that is word-fed and spirit-led. Let me tell you who we are. We are a church that is seeking to minister to the whole person. We are a church that believes in mission and making an impact in our community. If you are a, retur if you are a returning friend, God bless you and we celebrate you. If you are a disciple of True Vine, we love you and we honor you. If you are listening to us via Facebook, please put a comment in the comment box and tell us who you are and what city, state, or country you are in. Like and share our page. Let's prepare ourselves for a move of God in our worship service today. Amen. Let's put our hands together for our youth. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for our youth. We got to train up our children in the way they should grow. Hallelujah. 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 This morning, we come before you, Lord, and we just say we thank you, God. We thank you for all the mercies that you have granted to us. And as we consider all those mercies, we want to say thank you for the freedom to worship in your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. So today I want you to stand on your feet. We're going to put our hands together. This song is an action song. It talks about being free. We're going to jump. We're going to shout. We're going to spin. We're just going to give it all to God because he set us free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Clap a little louder than before. I want to sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I want to jump higher than before. I want to shout louder. Oh, yeah. Everybody sing free. sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I want to spin wider than before. I want to shout louder. Oh, yeah. Everybody sing free. Before. I want to worship deeper, oh yeah, I want to scream, oh yeah, everybody sing free. No more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Lift your hands and sing with me. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Lift your hands and sing with me. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Free, we can sing hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Freedom. Freedom. No more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Sing to me with me. No more, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Let's worship together because we are free this morning. Hallelujah. We are so free. You can move around in the church today and just worship because God has set you free. Hallelujah. Worship God with us today in this place. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to be receiving an awesome blessing from God today. If you believe that, just keep your hands lifted and worship God where you are today because it feels so awesome to be free. Hallelujah. So awesome to be free, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up our worship in this place. Hallelujah. 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 God, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. for being free this morning. My hands are lifted up. Woo. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. God, we're ready to receive it. Hallelujah. A blessing from you. My hands are lifted. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready, oh God. My heart is ready to receive a blessing, a blessing from you. Oh God, we're ready to receive a blessing, yes. A blessing from you.
blessing from you. Come on, we're ready to receive that blessing God has for us this morning. A blessing from you. Oh, we're ready to receive a blessing. A blessing from you. Come on, let's worship God right here. God, we're ready to receive every blessing. A blessing from you. Oh, Come on, let's worship. My hands are lifted. My hands are lifted. Woo. God, we withhold nothing from you this morning. My heart is ready to receive a blessing. A blessing from you. Oh, a blessing. A blessing from you. Let's do that one more time, family. Oh. My hands are lifted up, My yes. My hands are lifted up. God, our hearts are ready, oh yes. Our heart is ready to receive a blessing, yeah. Oh, a blessing, a blessing from you. Come on, let's lift up our worship in this place. Come on, let's lift up our worship in this place. God, we bless you in this place, oh Jesus. We bless you in this place, oh God. God, we choose to worship you this morning. from you. God, we worship you in this place, oh God. A blessing from you. God, we hear your heartbeat in worship Jesus. this morning. Oh, no, no, bo, son, da, 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 see. A blessing from you. We worship you, we worship Jesus. you. A blessing. A blessing from you. Good morning, True Vine, Facebook family. For your consideration this morning, I'll be reading Psalm 61 in its entirety. Hear my cry, O God, un attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry unto thee. When my, earth, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the convert of thy wings, Selah. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear my na thy name. Thou wilt pro prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth for which may preserve him. So, so will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. I have read to you Psalm 61 in its entirety. May the Lord have a blessing upon the hearing, readers, and doers of his word. Praise God. How many people want to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant? Yes. And so I just have one scripture today, and that is Matthew 25 and 23. This is the New Testament. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Ha. Uh -huh. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you this gracious morning. I'd like to say good morning to all our guests and visitors. Like our bishop say, if this is your first time, you are a guest. The next time you come, you're going to have to guess where everything is. <laughs> we don't want you to be a guest. We want you to be family. Our Facebook friends, God bless you this morning for joining us. In Psalms 34, 1 through 4, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes his boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. Father, this morning we declare that we will bless your name. We will bless your name. We will bless your name. From the depths of our souls, we shall cry out, Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Lord, we love you, and we know you first loved us. So we magnify your name, God. Uh -huh. We call upon the name of Jesus. That name is above every name. And we say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. You woke us up this morning. Clothe us in our right minds. You gave us a portion of health. And Lord, we pressed out today to say thank you. We thank you for answering those prayers, God, that no one knows about but me and you. We thank you, God, for moving in that situation that our enemy has set up as a trap. But we know, God, that you would make our crooked way straight. Yes, yes. You will cause, God, the world to see our good works and give you glory. Yes, for what doors you've opened, no man can close. So we thank you, God, for, for your ways as far away from our ways as the east is from the west. And they are higher than it is from the heavens to the earth. So we thank you, God, that you're God all by yourself. We thank you, God, that as we praise you today, someone's going to get healed. We thank you today, God, that as we give you glory, someone's situation is going to turn around. You're going to turn it around, God, and turn it around, God. We thank you for turning it around right now, even as we pray. Those doors that have been slammed in their face, they're going to be open. Hallelujah. We thank you. Provisions are going to be poured out, pressed down, shaken together, and run over. Men are going to rush to pour into our bosom, God. We thank you right now, God, for marriages, God. We thank you that you're strengthening them each and every day, even the more, God. And those who are looking to be married or those who are disappointed in marriage, God, we pray, God, that you would comfort them and let them know that marriage is ordained by you. Let them know, God, that you're with them. You will never leave them nor forsake them. Even if we make our bed in hell, you are still there. So we can count on you, God. So, God, we thank you we can count on you. We thank you that your promises are sure. And we thank you right now, God, that as we go in the furthest of this service, that miracles and blessings are going to just be poured out upon your people. And, God, we know you'll do it because you said you will withhold no good thing for those that walk upright before you. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, you would be there in the midst. And where you are, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and blessings forevermore. So we thank you and we praise you. And we say, Lord, just have your way in the midst of your people. Even in our stubbornness, God, have your way in the midst of your people. Help us in our unbelief. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Let's continue as we worship, hallelujah, Jesus. We are just grateful this morning that we are here in the house of the Lord. All right, this is the part of our service where everybody can participate. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, whether you're in person or online, we can all participate because True Vine, what time is it? Oh no, that was just a practice one. I could not hear everybody. All right, True Vine. What time is it? It's kingdom investment time. Mind time. Absolutely. It is kingdom investment time. Now, if you have not had an opportunity to grab the 2021 State of the Church, please do so. It has a lot of information in there that will let you know exactly where your tithes, your offerings, and your donations and contributions are going to. Now, there's one part in there that struck me when it says stewardship. It says stewardship is what I do with everything I have because it is all a gift from God. So no matter if it's your money, it's your time, your talents. We are looking for those things here in True Vine. If you cannot give a physical cash offering, you write your name with your gift and put it in that basket. What is a gift of um, going to do outreach, a gift of giving your technical services, a gift of writing, whatever it is between our churches, location number one and location number two coming to uh, 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 an address near you and also True Vine Elevation Academy coming to an address near you we need every single person in person or online to give so at this time we're going to be doing our financial giving which you can do through cash app with dollar dollar sign true vine sa or by texting tvc to 54244 you can also send it by mail to 1357 rice road or you can go on our, our website at true vine church sa and pay via paypal Again, if you do not have anything to give at this moment financially, we are still looking for people with their time and their talents to give to our church. So if you don't have it to um, put in the offering box right now, you can also put it online and we will reach out to you. So we ask you to stand right now as we have some offertory music and you just dig deep and celebrate and give some offertory music. <laughs> Father God, thank you for today's offering. Bless those who could give and those who couldn't. For God, we ask that you bless a tenfold for the furtherance of your kingdom's work. All this we ask in thy precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. My needs are met. Needs are met. I'm, out of debt. I'm out of debt. I have more in store, have more in store. For, the for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? You may be seated. Is it on? Praise God. Amen. Before we um, get a chance to introduce our speaker, we are celebrating two awesome things today here at True Vine. Praise God. We are in a celebratory mood. Um, first, we have Pastor Sheila. Come on out here. Praise God. Pastor Sheila is, I know, tell her to come on, step out the door. I think she was in the, in the, come and step out here. She is the president of our Women of the Word. Come and let's clap for her. Today is her birthday. And we, come on over here so they can see you. She looking all pretty. Come on up here. <laughs> we want to give you something on behalf of True Vine and a bishop of ourselves and tell you we love you. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. 
And then we also want to celebrate Dr. Cross. I don't know what you guys are doing right after service, but right after service, she's already started from nine, to, I think it's from a nine to nine, celebrating one year anniversary at Chicago Bite. Let's clap for her. 50% off on meals today. Chicago Bite is located at 2339 Evans Road. Sweet 106. We're asking everyone to go and let's go and celebrate and buy some food. Invite friends and family to go celebrate with her this afternoon. Amen. We are going right after service. So we're going to pray and thank God for another year that God has blessed her during this pandemic time. God is so good. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited about you. I don't know if you guys heard this, how the, the music was flowing. This is the, the presence of the Lord in this place. Miss Christina, we thank God for you joining us today. <laughs> Amen. Bishop says we have gallivanters, but God has blessed people to come in and, and be with us. And as you were praying, I thought about my daughter, the, the um, Tara that was singing. She started so young playing the drums and you just gave me so much joy. So I thank God for you being here and blessings upon you, woman of God. Amen. So for those who are watching this by streaming, if you have not liked, tagged, or shared the page, what you waiting on? Go ahead, like, tag, and share. Those who are in here, go ahead and like, tag, and share. We can get ready to hear an awesome word. We praise God for all our elders, our deacons, and all our disciples here at True Vine. And before I forget, I was supposed to make one other announcement. Wednesday, if you have not received a mirror from Minister Clark, she's doing Bible study. She's passing out the mirrors that she's going to be using for her Bible study. Please see her before you leave so she can place the mirror in your hand. You'll be ready for the Bible study on Wednesday. Join us. It's at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays and we're on our Zoom. So praise God for the people of God. We have a man of God who loves God, the angel of this house. We are so grateful, who loves God, who seeks God for a word. Praise God, and that's so important in this time, in this season. So prepare yourself. I know I told you just to sit down, but stand on up. Come on, stand up. If we had the president come in, we would stand and clap. So let's clap for our bishop, Bishop Trevor D. Alexander. Amen. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Father, Son, and... All right, just checking, just checking. Make sure I'm in the right church. Well, today's Sunday. Hallelujah. This is the last Sunday in the month of July. I, I, I was going right there. Do you realize we are closer to Christmas? And it seemed to me we just had Christmas. Did somebody take some month away when we were sleeping? Because Christmas is coming around faster and faster. But when I was a child, exactly. it took forever. Yeah. All right, got that out, my system. Praise God. <laughs> oh, okay. Praise the Lord. Getting, getting orders from headquarters. <laughs> somebody asked me, what is it like to have a... I have a wife that's always here. I said that she increases her orders. <laughs> that's what it does. Get, I get orders. And I know how to take orders. And I follow orders. Because I'm a man under authority. <laughs> All right. Listen, before we go any further, I want to thank everybody um, who's going to join us at Chicago Bites. Because I know when we get there, y'all be greasing. But she, we were there when she opened the door on day one. And we're going to be there to pray that she has long success. I have a, I have a location for her next move. I've been praying. Every time I drive by there, I pray. I pray right there because it's empty. And it needs a Chicago Bites right there, right off the highway, right off the highway. So we thank God for Dr. Cross. I know she's, she normally chimes in and while she's cooking and all that good stuff. So see you soon. And we want to thank God for all our visitors. Thank you for joining us today. Sister G, you, you wearing that hat, girl. Wear that hat, girl. Wear that hat. Sister Yolanda, good to see you again. Amen. Praise God. And, and uh, Sister Calloway, good to see you as well. All right, y'all ready for the word? Yes. But before God, let me tell you something. I go nowhere without acknowledging, without acknowledging my family, my two daughters in Houston. I know they're watching because I see who's online. And to Tara, who's in the back helping out. And to the woman that makes my liver quiver and my spleen. She makes, she makes it. 
Oh, he don't put it in his dress. <laughs> he don't start rapping over there. <laughs> All right, Joseph. <laughs> he, just, he, he went for squeaky. He just rap. <laughs> All right, Joseph. They know the head. Oh, I didn't see mother. Mother, how are you? Ooh. If I don't acknowledge mother, that ain't gonna be right. She ain't cut nobody in a while. <laughs> and thank God for for our musicians and thank you so much. And um, you tell the other Michael, he stopped gallivanting. He gallivanting. You know, one thing I gotta say about True Pine, we never have to worry about folks learning how to gallivant. Y'all know how to do that well. Do it well, do it well. But it's good to be able to um, have fun and do things because self-care is important. Enjoy yourself, amen? I wanna thank God for the praise team. Hallelujah. Praise God. Y'all sang us this morning. And you too, Jaden. <laughs> that, that, that great nephew. You gotta, he's a snitch. Well, let me tell you, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. That boy was snitch on you. He was snitch on you in a heartbeat. <laughs> All right. Y'all ready for the word? John chapter 21. That's New Testament, Jeff. John chapter 21. And, and happy birthday to Sister Sheila. I'll call you later and sing my happy birthday song. <laughs> Why y'all do like that? If, if you ain't never heard me sing my birthday song, you in for a treat. There you go, there you go. There's not, Sister Irene, I heard you. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to hear it, but I heard it. I have a special rendition that is second to none. If you never heard it, Sister Calibre, it was your birthday. September 4th, oh, you're just coming up. Make sure I have your cell phone number. I gotta give you a phone call. And it, it ain't gonna be, listen, once you hear it, you will be, what's it, crying? <laughs> you will be enjoy, ecstatic, you'll be all of that. All right, y'all ready? John chapter 21, verses three to 12. This is a new international version. Uh, no, 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 excuse me, Living Translation, New Living Translation. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. What, we'll go with you, they all said. So they went out uh, to the boat and they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellas, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said to them, throw your net on the right side of the boat and y'all will get some. So they did. And they couldn't haul in the net because it was full of many fish. Then the disciple who Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic for he was stripped for work. He jumped into the water and headed to the shore. The other stayed in the boat to pull in the load of the net into the boat. For there were a hundred, they were they were about a hundred yards from the shore. And when they got to the to the and when Peter got to the shore, he saw the fish cooking on the charcoal and some bread. Hmm. Bring some of the fish you have caught, Jesus said. So Peter, so Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153, 153 large fish, and yet the net did not break nor tore. Now come and have breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dare ask who he was, for they knew it was the Lord. This is the work of God. This is the word of God when people say thanks be unto God. You may be seated. You may be seated. We want to talk to you today for the topic, greatness is inside of you. Greatness is inside of you. It is apparent to me that we, the church, have not always operated in greatness. There's a battle going on inside of us for the greatness to come out. Greatness is in our pathway. Some of us have experienced challenges, difficulties, situation that will sometimes cause us 
to question our greatness. Some of us have been through some stuff, and when we look at what we've been through, it doesn't match what we think we should be. Uh huh. Oftentimes, God will put leadership in our pathway to pull out, to stir up, and to agitate the greatness that is inside of us. Have you ever had a leader? Not me. Not me. Her. <laughs> or a teacher that just aggravated, agitated a mess out of you? Uh-huh. Sometimes you can hardly stand to be around them. And the only thing they're trying to do is to pull the greatness out of you. And you just get agitated just being in their presence because they want you to do what's inside of you that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you see them coming and you say, ugh. You get that feeling and you don't know why. Because that greatness that's inside of you that wants to come out, but you're holding it back. You get agitated. Uh, <laughs> may I offer this to you, that, that, that the people who agitate you, either positive or negative, will have an impact on your life if you allow the greatness to come out. Okay, all right. Um, Jesus is good at that. He aggravated the disciples. He said stuff like, oh, ye of little faith. Hold up now, Jesus. Um, you know, I gave up everything <laughs> to follow you. And you said, I got little faith. Get thee behind me, Satan. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, <laughs> hold up, Jesus. <laughs> Did you just call me the devil? Jesus will agitate you. And, and, and then he had to tell a parable. It's just stir some stuff up inside of you. The disciples go to Samaria. They get mistreated. They come back to Jesus and they said, uh, Jesus, you got power. You got connection on high. Call down them angels. Destroy that city. Keep reading. A group of people come to Jesus and said, well, I want to know who my neighbor is. Jesus said, there's a man that fell on, the, uh, was beaten up, left for dead. The priest and the Levite walked by him, but a Samaritan. Well, then why would you use a Samaritan, Jesus? That's from the city that they want to destroy. And now Jesus is teaching on them. Oh, oh, y'all didn't get that? Jesus is teaching and using the. He's stirring up something inside of him. And sometimes when we get stirred up, we don't want to be around the people. Greatness is inside of us, but sometimes situations will try to keep us in the dark and cloud our minds so we don't see what the enemy already sees. Uh, greatness is in us. And sometimes we are in a situation, about to come out of a situation, or been out of a situation, and uh, that situation called pulled, stirred some stuff in you All right. so your greatness will come forth. My, my assignment is simple today, really simple. I want to illuminate the greatness that's inside of all of us and let it come forth. My first point, that was just introduction. My first point is we are locked in a battle. We are locked in a battle. Over the years, I found out that God would give you vision but the vision is progressive. He gives you a glimpse. But he doesn't let you see all of it. And if we're truthful, if we saw it, all of it, some of us will not get run, forest run. Because if I had known that I was going to be standing here and I had to go through all of that to get here, no, sir. I, I, matter of fact, I could recommend somebody who's even better than me to stand here if I don't have to go through anything. But life situation will stir up in you and you get a battle going on. This vision is progressive 
And if we don't know all of the details, but the Lord will fill it in as you go. Um, hmm. You got to learn how to trust God, even when you can't trace him. The Lord works in us. Sometimes works stuff out of us to prepare us for what he has for us. Mm. Brothers, do you have any fish? <laughs> wait, wait. I want you to understand who's asking the question. Jesus is asking them, do they have any fish? He already know the answer. Yes, yes, yes. Why would he ask a question he already know? They fished all night long, Sean. <laughs> caught nothing. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, nephew. I'm sorry. Sean go out fishing. He ain't caught a thing. <laughs> and when he did come back with a fish, somebody gave it to him. <laughs> or the second one. Oh, he caught one small one. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. <laughs> but... He asked them, fellas, do you have any fish? Why would he ask the question that he already know the answer to? And now he causes them to go on a journey that's going to agitate them. Hold up, fellas. <laughs> I've been out here all night long. You ain't caught nothing. Then a voice on the other side that they don't know who he is yet want to ask the question about my fishing capabilities. <laughs> now, if I was Peter, in my flesh, man, I'm a fisherman. <laughs> I've been doing this for a living. Don't you ask me about my craft. That's in my flesh. All right. It's in flesh. A question can stir some stuff that will agitate the greatness that's inside of us, and God will give us a vision. And sometimes you get challenged in the vision because he wants the vision to come forth because we have become comfortable where we are. Huh. Jesus will call you a, a, a title, and you have not even qualified. He called the disciples apostles, and they didn't accomplish a single thing. When those of us who've been in the military, when you sign that contract going to basic training, they don't call you a trainee. They call you a soldier. Yes. And you get paid. But you ain't graduated yet. But you, when, when you graduate, don't mean you know it all. Right. You grow into it. Right. You learn in this. You, you mature. But then drill sergeants will agitate the mess out of you. Yes, they will. Ask me how I know. I was one of them. <laughs> I was one of them. I know how to, I used to wake folks up 3, 4 to 5 in the morning. Ask me how. Get two trash can lids. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, they hated me. I agitated them. I, that was worse. Yes, it was. I agitated them because they had to become uncomfortable being comfortable. Oh, and they know that I was on duty. Oh, don't know. No. I was good at agitating people because I was good at pulling greatness out of people. I don't do that in the church much. Much. Can I say much? <laughs> just a little, just a little, just a little. I, I, anyway, so let me. Um, the Apostle Paul gives us an, an inclination of what he went through to get to his greatness. In Philippians 3 and 12, he says, not though that I have already obtained, neither am I already perfect, but I follow after that what apprehended me. Hold up. I haven't got it all. Something apprehended me. I'm going after it. Have you ever prayed tag? Hide and go seek? Have y'all ever done y'all ever done that? Yeah. What? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I thought of the Lord was speaking. <laughs> I was like, okay, God. Um, 
<laughs> he sounded just like my voice. Uh, <laughs> um, when you tag somebody, you got to chase after that person. Paul said, I'm not perfect, but I'm going after the very thing that apprehended me. In other words, the vision that God tapped me on the shoulder with, I had spent the rest of my life trying to chase it. Here's the thing. And as soon as you get close to it, you realize you're not even close. You keep your going after. It's like the Energizer Bunny. As long as you keep seeking after greatness, as long as you keep pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, you realize that you're not there yet. Paul said, no, that I've not obtained. You wrote two-thirds of the New Testament scripture and said you had not obtained. Paul said, I'm not even perfect. But I keep pressing. I keep pressing. There's a battle going on inside of us, and we're trying to get there. There's a struggle. <sighs> and sometimes that struggle meets us in the middle of the journey. When you're in the middle of the journey, <laughs> you're so close to the future and just as close to the past. Now, that's a struggle. Because when you get challenged in the midst of the, of the journey, the temptation is to go back. Because you know what's back there. But you're just as close to move forward. The disciples got challenged in the middle of the journey. And Peter says, I'm going fishing. It was easy for him to go fishing. Because he knew what was back there, but he didn't know what was before him. But what I love about the text, Jesus did. Jesus met them where they went back to. Hold on that. Just put that on the shelf. I'll come and get it in a minute. Think about it for a moment. They went back, and Jesus right there where they were waiting on them. Does he, does, does he know what was? Yeah, he's Jesus. All right, let me. Um, so in the middle of the journey is sometimes the hardest place to be challenged. May I just say this as a the church? We have not done a great job preparing us, the church, for the middle of the journey ministry. The middle of the journey ministry is hard. Let me tell you how hard it is. You get one foot in the future and one foot in the past, and now you got to determine which way to go. It's a struggle because you're so close to the future and just as close to the past, and you got to figure out what you want to do. Many of us would be like Peter. I'm going fishing because we know how to go into survival mode. Did I just say that? We're comfortable with the survival mode because it's what we've been doing that works for us. But in the plan of God, God is trying to get us to move forward and not back. But as long as we got one foot in the past and one foot in the future, we tend to lean towards the past because the past we understand and we know what worked in the past, but I don't know what tools I'm going to use in the future. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, <clears throat> this internal battle uh, keeps us in a struggle. Jesus says to the disciples, uh, go on a boat and I'll meet you on the other side. And King James says, and when they were in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the sea, a great storm came. When we are so close to the vision, uh, when we're just as close to the, to, the, to the end as we are from the beginning, you can expect a storm. Because the storm is there to break you, to keep you from moving forward. And when they got in the middle, the storm came. And everybody on the boat that loved Jesus was afraid. Jesus manifested himself in the middle of the storm, and they were still afraid because they thought he was a ghost. But there was a gentleman by the name of John. John said, it's the Lord. And then Peter said, God, Jesus, if that's you, tell me to come. And what does Peter do? He gets out of the boat, 
and walks. There's something about having somebody on a boat that can recognize the voice of God. Hold on to that because I'm going to come and get that too. He gets out of the boat. He starts walking, but he loses focus and begins to sink. Outside of Jesus, Peter, the only one in the Bible, recorded as ever walking on water. Uh, can I just say this? And I truly believe it's not in the text, but I believe it. If they, all of the gentlemen that was on the boat wanted to walk, they could have walked too. Every last one of them could have stepped out of that boat. But Peter walked. Sometimes the fear of failure keeps us from tapping into greatness. Everybody on the boat was scared, but they all had the capability to move. But fear crippled them. But Peter said, I'm going to overcome my fear until he lost focus. Uh, uh, we got to understand that when you get close to when you're in the middle of the journey, the storm is going to hit, but we have to know how to push through. Uh, let me, let me move. Greatness is inside of us. Greatness is inside of us. So we, we, we got to understand that there's a lock. We are locked in for a battle. There's a struggle. Right. Let me get to my second point real quickly, because here's the second point. It's in the text. The second point is we got to be pay attention to the change in your environment. Yeah. Pay attention to the change in your environment. Now, some of you have heard me teach on this before. And there's some folks on, on um, our virtual platform who have not heard me. And for those of you who have heard me before, it's still worth repeating. Pay attention to the text real quick. Let me see if I can bring this up. In verse 3, verse 7, and 11, Peter is addressed as Simon Peter. In verse 7, Excuse me, verse, yeah, verse 3 and verse 11, Simon Peter. And in verse 7, he's addressed as Peter. Same person. One is Simon Peter. One is Peter. At first glance, that don't mean much, but it does. Because when Jesus uses Simon Peter, he is sending a message. Let me see if I can bring this out to you. In Matthew's gospel, the 16th chapter, verse 17 and 18, Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Father, which is heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. Okay. He went from being Simon, son of Jonah. But I tell you, you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church in the gates of hell, will not prevail against you. Jesus had done something right here. And he does it again in this text in John. He's changed the environment. And we may not have paid attention. Let me see if I can work this out. In the Greek coin there, the word Petra, Petros, means little stone. Simon, son of Jonah, you're, 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 you're connected to your father. Um, Petros is little stone but I'm going to call you Pet Petra, meaning rock. And upon the, that rock, I'm going to build my church. Now, stay attention. This is, this is, this is going to be, there's going to be a shift right here. The word Petra is a feminine version. Obviously that Jesus not just called Peter, Peter, Petra, referring to him by gender. He has now inserted something in the environment. That is, we got to pay attention to. Why would Jesus use a feminine version of a name? And he's talking about building his church. He's talking to Peter. But he uses a feminine version of a, okay, young, mm, okay. I'm trying to set it up. This is kingdom language. If I'm going to build a kingdom, this is Jesus. I don't need just Peters. I need some Petras. And it's some men and some women. For years, we've been talking about, he called him Peter. 
But when you do the study of the name, he called him Petra, yeah. meaning not just rock, but women, you all rock too. All right, all right. I hear you. Come on here. This, this, this building of the kingdom is not all about men only. It's about women too. It's been in the tech the whole time, but we're just being focused on Peter. And the Lord said, no, pay attention to your environment because I invite everybody to build this kingdom. And I got greatness in men and I got greatness in women. And when they start working together, watch the kingdom grow. I'm not, I'm not, okay, all right, okay, all right. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to preach, I'm trying to preach. Jesus called him Petra. I need men and women to build this church. And another reason I think he called him uh, Petra <laughs> Because Peter ain't finished yet. Peter still got some stuff he got to work out of him. Uh, Peter still sometimes vacillate between the past and the future. Who do men say that I am? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's the future, Peter. Yes, they come to arrest Jesus. <laughs> Cuts off in the air. That's past, Peter. We got, uh, I ain't knocking him because um, I got some issues. If you catch me in the middle of my journey, there's three of me. Oh, there's three of me. There's Trevor. There's Trevor the Bishop and Bishop Trevor. Mm -hmm. my, there's a difference. That's a fact. Trevor the Bishop works overtime to keep Trevor in check so Bishop Trevor can show up. <laughs> Over time. Because if you catch me wrong, I respond wrong. And sometimes a word will pop in my mind and Trevor the Bishop say, you can't say that. You can't, you, 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 you can't. Because if you say it, the Bishop Trevor gonna look bad. But Trevor said, say it. <laughs> listen, listen. I, 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 okay. Full, full disclosure, full disclosure. I'm talking to my daughter on the phone the other day. <laughs> she know. <laughs> and Trevor was shining. This, this, this gentleman cut me off and flipped me off. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Trevor said, forget the bishop stuff. <laughs> I got this. I'm on the phone with my daughter. Doctor. She said, dad, road rage is real. Dad, dad. <laughs> she had to talk me off the ledge because Trevor showed up. Oh, y'all got, y'all laughing at me because y'all know y'all got some too. Uh-huh, catch you on the wrong day. Uh-huh, catch you on the wrong day. Some of y'all got four natures. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, sometimes I have to wonder which one are you? Okay. Let me stay in the text. What your name is. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. I got guests in the house. It's Christina, I'm sorry. I'm, she might never come back again. <laughs> Woo, that's good, Gigi. That's good. Uh, man. I have to work to keep my nature in check. And there's days Peter has it, and there's days he don't. Yes. And the Lord is working on Peter. And he's trying to get the greatness in him to come forth. Oh, and so, uh, this, this, when he says, I'm going to build, I'm going to use women, I'm going to do all of that, this is, this is kingdom work. He's trying to build a kingdom. He wants the greatness inside of us to come out. So we talked about the battle. We talked about the environment. Let me move into the, my next path, my last pass. Peter takes a stance and goes back to his past. Uh, Peter is an, is, is an emerging leader among the brethren. Yes, sir. Jesus says to Peter, man, you, 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 you got some connection to God. I'm going to give you the keys. He has been... In essence, given responsibility by the law. Jesus is not around. They're going through some hard times. 
instead of shining as a leader, he decides to go back to his past. Hmm. How many times have we failed and went back to what we know instead of moving into our past, our future? Hmm. How many times have we reacted from what we know instead of acting from what we should do? Uh, Peter, 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 why, 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 Peter? Because sometimes he's Simon Peter, the one that has the past. And some days he's Peter, the one that moves towards the future. Uh, Peter, when you should shine, you went back. When the people were looking for you for leadership, you gave them going backwards. You gave them a ministry of retreat. And God is calling the greatness out of you, and you go back. But here's the good news. <laughs> Jesus knew who he gave the keys to. <laughs> he said, Peter ain't got it all. As soon as he get hard time, the first thing he's going to do is go back to what he knows. And I'm going to be waiting on him. Brothers, do you have any fish? And there's John, the one whom Jesus loves, says to Peter, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus calls him Simon's Peter. John says Peter. Okay, let me say that again. Simon Peter speaks to what he used to be. Peter speaks to what he will become. John says, Peter, it is a lot. Okay, let me say it again. Jesus says, Simon Peter, what he used to be. But I change your name to Peter, what you will become. His brother, his friend says, Peter. Okay, yeah, has it sunk in yet? Okay. Peter is what John called him. Because John recognizes Peter's greatness. And when he calls him Peter, he's calling forth the greatness and the leader that he is. Because he recognizes what others have not recognized yet. Woo! He calls Peter to come forth. And when he comes forth, he said, it is the Lord. John recognizes the voice. Peter goes into action. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I love me some John. John knows the voice of the Lord, but he's not an action guy. He'll follow as long as somebody takes the lead. I'm like, okay, y'all in. Um, not everybody is a trailblazer. Not everybody is cut out to trail, to cut a trail for others to follow. Because you got to, okay, let me get this star track. You got to be boldly go where no man has ever been before. Uh, okay, y'all star trekkers in here? Okay, I'm a, I'm a trekkie, I'm a trekkie. Come on here. Um, yeah, that, that's, that, that's powerful too, by the way. Um, you know what that means? This is a Jewish blessing. We call it a Kohenine blessing. It calls for long life prosperity. So when the letter Nemo does that, that is a Jewish sign for Calling in for long life and prosperity. Oh, yeah. So let me get stay on track here. Um, he, 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 he says, Peter, future leader, that's the Lord. Watch this. Watch this. Now, Peter, lead us. Come on. You missed that, didn't you? He now calls for Peter to be the action guy that Jesus told him he was. He didn't say Simon Peter. He said, Peter, it is the Lord. Your responsibility is to lead us. And Peter says, I'm going to live up to my, I'm going to live up to it. He gets out of the boat. And <laughs> starts swimming. He gets to the shore. Jesus has the fish in the skillet. Cooking. Matter of fact, this is what messes me up. Jesus was there all night long <laughs> waiting on the fellas <laughs> to get finished. If that don't mess you up, that messes me up. 
Why did he not intervene before? If you know they ain't gonna catch nothing, you see them catching, casting the net on the wrong side. Why don't you tell them early enough to pull up their nets, to put it on the other side? Because if he did that, they would have missed an important lesson. Sometimes you, we, we move too fast and we, 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 we make things too easy. And when it's time to be strong, you ain't got a, a, a ounce of strength in you because it's been too easy. When a turtle takes his egg, takes her eggs and plant her eggs and into the, into the sand, it's some distance from the ocean. And when those little turtles can emerge out, they got to make their way down to the ocean. And every, every time they make a step, their fins get stronger. You pick up a turtle and put that turtle in the, in the ocean, try to save them some journey, that turtle be dead in less than a half hour because he ain't got the strength to keep on swimming. Just keep swimming. Okay, I'm sorry. Y'all don't know about that. Y'all don't watch cartoons. Um, there's some lessons in cartoons now. Man, come on here. And, and so he calls Peter and goes into action. Peter gets on the shore, and guess what? Jesus has the fish in the skillet and is cooking. He now tells Peter to bring the rest of the fish over to where he was. Okay, this is, I'm going to come to the chase here because this, this whole thing is fascinating to me. What's fascinating is when he first met them, he told them where to cast their nets. And they cast the net and the nets broke. He now sees them at a different stage of their journey, tells them where to cast their net. They catch large fishes and their nets didn't break. That's a whole different um, message by itself. But why would Jesus tell Peter to bring the fish that he caught over there when he already has what they need? Hmm. So let me give you two quick lessons why I believe that's, that's what's going on here, what Jesus is doing. The first thing is, if we're going to reach greatness, we must resist the temptation to go backwards. Mm. Uh, you, you will get to the end version. You will get there. Yeah, you will. Uh -huh. But you arrive later than your scheduled appointment. Some of us have to use GPSs. You, you use it too? Uh. You're sitting right in front of somebody who uses it all the time. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you need help. Um, I have noticed with a GPS that it would take me past my destination to bring me around the other side. And I arrive where I need to arrive, but I'm later than where I'm supposed to be. Kid you not, I was going to a church. I strolled by the church and said, this church. It took me all the way around the church to come in. I said, I could have just turned right there. Save the journey. So I arrived later than I was expected. Sometimes we go backwards and we arrive later than we expect. Uh, sometimes going back, we cause more uh, detours than going forward. So going back, we have to resist the temptation to go backwards. The next thing I believe that Jesus is saying to us is that if we're going to obtain greatness, we must be willing to give up so we can go ahead. We must be willing to give up so you can go ahead. As long as we maintain control of the environment that the Lord is trying to change, it's going to take us longer to get our greatness to be pulled out of us. Let me see if I, if I can make this. I give you keys, Peter. I call forth your greatness, but you don't understand what you got. You can't handle the responsibility. You just got it. So he spends his time acting in Simon Peter, but Jesus called him Peter. He denies Jesus three times, warms himself by strange fires. That's Simon Peter. But in Acts chapter 4, when they told Peter, don't you preach in his name, don't you teach in his name, here comes Peter the leader, uh, 
Thank you for your suggestion. We, we take that. But I'm going to do what the Lord tell me to do. He now got bold because he now has a tool that he didn't have before. What's the tool? The Holy Spirit. That comes to strengthen. And, anyway, and so Peter is struggling with leadership and his greatness because he doesn't understand what he has. So Jesus has to pull it out of him. And every time he pulls it out of him, there's less of Pete, uh, Simon Peter and more Peter starts emerging. Uh, and so you got to trust him. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. But then he says, bring the fish that you caught over here. Okay. Sometimes you have to give up to go ahead. They caught the fish. But Jesus says, bring it to me. Okay. That was so profound, you missed it. You got it, but you got to give it up. You worked hard for it, but you got to give it up. You sweated for this, but you got to give it up. But when you give it up to Jesus, what looked like you lost, you really gained. Now, this is where I see Jesus acting like his father. Because one of the names for, for God is El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. He catches fish. They have 153. That's a whole different, I, I don't preach on that before. I ain't got time for that. 153. But the fish that they need is already in the skillet, cooked. Yeah. Come on, brothers, have that breakfast. He's already ready, waiting on them. Why would they need to bring what they just caught? Because I told you where to cast the net. I just provided for your future. I just provided for your future. Because I'm the God that is more than enough. If you trust me and you're willing to give it up, you'll go ahead. And you will look like you're losing, but you're really gaining. All right, I'm, I'm really done. I'm really done. I'm closing. Get ready for my scripture. You got it ready. Um, hold on there. Uh, I got, the Lord gave me two prophetic scriptures for you all. And the first scripture is, and y'all know this because it's our theme. Daniel 11, 32. And the people that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. When you tap into the greatness that's inside of you, be prepared to do what people think that cannot be done. When you tap into the greatness that's inside of you, well, people say, I tried it before, it didn't work. Well, guess what? You didn't have me on your team. Some of you are a blessing to your company because when you showed up, greatness showed up with you. Ideas and possibilities showed up with you. And that you, you are there for a future problem they don't even know you to have yet. Come on here. They don't know they have it, but Lord had you as a solution. And when it's time for you to shine, you're going to shine and get ready for your next promotion. All right, that's a word for somebody in here. Let's close out with my last scripture that I'm done. I'm putting it in the hands of Tara. Joshua 17 and 17. Uh -huh. And Joshua spoke uh -huh. to the house of Joseph. Yeah, yeah. To Ephraim and Manasseh. Yes. Saying, you are a great people. Wait, wait, wait. True vine. Don't look at, read this scripture as if it's to Joshua and to Manasseh. It's to you. The Lord is saying, you are a great people and do and what? And you have great power. And you have great power. Thank you, Jesus. You are a great people and you have great power. Speak. Say that after you have you are great people. You are great people and you have great power. And have great power. And you will have great opposition. And you have great opposition. Because you have great people, you are great people. And you have great people. And you have great power. And you have great power. You have the power to overcome great opposition. You have power to overcome great opposition. No matter how much the enemy work against you, you are a great people. No, how much he throws the kitchen sink against you, you have great power. And no matter what it look like you're losing, if you operate in greatness and use your great power, you will come ahead. This is us. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. And people say, thanks be unto God. You, you know that song, my status is changing. That's where we're going to close out today. Hallelujah. I, this right here is to tell you all. You are about to experience a change in your life that you have this season 
is calling for the greatness in you. And you have been prepared for such a time as this. And the solution to problems is in you. This is your season to shine. Your status of being a bench warmer has changed. Your status of flying under the radar on your job is about to change. People have been watching you to see how you have been reacting. Now let them see your greatness and not your shyness. Uh, time out for being timid. Time to start walking in greatness. Uh, hallelujah, 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 Jesus. As we receive that word, come on, let's just worship God hallelujah, in this place. Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we thank you that we are a great people. We thank you for the great power that you have given us, God. So we are on our way to better days. Our decline has declined because our status has changed. Our status has changed. We bless your name, oh God. Oh, my status is changing. Decline has declined. My status is changing, decline as decline. I'm on my way to better days. My status is changing. My status is changing.
status is changing. Decline as decline. I'm on my way to better days. Bless your name, oh God. My status is changing. Decline as decline. I'm on my way to better days. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap. Let's clap. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. As they were singing, I don't know if you wrote it in the chat now. Or go ahead. Our status has changed. Everybody say, our status has changed. Our status has changed on your job, in your home, in your walk, in your church. Church number two, I heard it when he said no sitting down, bench warmers. I even had some eye contact with some people. There's gifts and talents that need to be stirred that will be a blessing to the body of Christ. For those that are online or maybe watching us later on YouTube, if you don't have a walk with the Lord, your status can change today. And that status comes from being the old man, becoming a new man in Christ. Just, hey, just accept that Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for your sins, no matter what you've done, no matter how you're feeling right now. Thank you, Jesus. I speak life to somebody right now who feels like they have no hope. I say you have life, you have worth, you have significance. You shall live. Thank you, God. Thank you for life. When the enemy of different voices are speaking to you, say not so. We come against the spirit of suicide right now. It's so prevalent running in the land, in our young people, in our adults, in our seniors. We speak life. We believe that the Lord loves you. He forgives you. He forgives you. He forgives you. Sometimes we don't forgive ourselves, but we thank God he forgives us. And then we confess, God, thank you for coming into my heart, forgiving me, loving me, dying on the cross, raising again with all powers in your hand. And he said, if you believe that and you accept him into your heart, then you're saved. And then we put D here. We say, become a disciple because you have to be taught. You have to learn how to grow and to mature. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit to help to lead and guide you in teaching so you can be grounded and rooted in the Christ, in Christ Jesus. So if that's you today, we thank God. So Father God, we thank you right now for those who are watching and those who are in the house. If you need salvation, raise your hand in the name of Jesus. So Father God, of those who are on Facebook or YouTube, Today is your day. Hard not your heart. God says, I'm here. I'm knocking. Ah, oh, he loves you. Thank you. Open up and say, yes, God, save me today. So, God, we thank you for saving those, that one that was not saved. We thank you for saving the, the backslider that has known your way but has come back. We thank you that you gave hope to those who are unsure today. And if there's somebody that's looking for a church home that needs to be planted in a place that has good ground, that'll get watered, get tilled, put in that I need a place to be rooted and grounded. This is the place I want to um, make my church. And we will... Um, get the discipleship classes one to you so you can begin to grow and to mature. So, Father, we thank you. We give you praise for what you've done and what you continue to do in the body of Christ. Let all God's people say amen. 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 And amen. Come on, let's clap for the Lord. If there's someone in the house, because I did not ask you, that, I didn't have my eyes open. I, did someone give their life to the Lord in here? Did someone want to make this church their home church? If that's not already in the in the on Facebook, you can put that in the chat and in YouTube, you can write that in and we can go back and follow that. So we just want to make sure we give you that opportunity. Amen. Real quickly, Jay, come on. You're not in trouble. Yeah. This is his last Sunday with us. He's going back Monday to Tampa. So, but while he was here, he gave his life to the Lord. Amen. I found out this morning that he prophesied to him and his dad that they're going to be preachers. Amen. Yeah, I did. <laughs> he said, I snitched on him. <laughs> I turned the tables. 
Amen. So we want to thank y'all for joining us tonight at 6 o'clock p.m. on Words for the Soul. Join us today. We're having what we call the Alexander Five, having conversation with the Alexanders. Join us. Don't forget, right after we're celebrating um, Chicago Bites' first year anniversary. And if you have not put happy birthday in the chat for Pastor Sheila, go ahead and put happy birthday to Pastor Woo! Sheila. Amen. Amen. Praise God as we celebrate her as well on today. As um, our praise team will close us out. Praise God. Thank you for coming out. Join us next week here at True Line, 1357 Rice Road. We would love to see you in the house. Praise God. The Lord bless you.